I'll share my screen in a bit so we can start in just a moment. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen. Just let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. So you can see um, Power Virtual Agents and shows Lily, right? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So I'd like to start by asking, um, if you've heard of Power Virtual Agents and what you think Power Virtual Agents does. <clears throat> okay, I've heard of Power Virtual Agents. Power Virtual Agents is used to build them um, chatbots. Okay, okay, that's great. That's great. So, yeah, yeah, very, very correct. Power Virtual Agents basically is used to build chatbots that can interact. Well, so you can actually use them to build chatbots that can interact maybe with customers, with staff, with people generally. And then there's also another part of Power Virtual Agents that you can use with um, Dynamics 365 that can also enable live chats or enable you to use the live chat feature. So it also has that part. So very quickly, I'll just try to um, explain some maybe terms or general overview of how it works before we go into like a demo session. So yes. <clears throat> so now using chatbots can offer a couple of benefits to an organization. So for instance, maybe um, assuming a company, so let's even use, um, let's use like a company that we all know. For instance, let's say MTN. You know the way we have MTN customer care and then you have maybe an issue with your SIM or with recharge and then you have to call customer care to say, hey, I have this issue. And then, you know, usually they have this automated um voice part that tells you okay if you have issues regarding this press one if you have issues regarding this other aspect press two so basically it's like giving you general overview or general information about different aspects before so if that doesn't now meet your concern or your need then you know it's now transfers you to an actual person that answers your questions so similarly Power virtual agent can do something like that. So not in this case, not voice, but via chat. So <clears throat> it does that using um, topics. So we can have like different topics. I would show you all of this. I just want to give like an overview first. So there are like different topics that can branch you into different sessions. So imagine you are chatting and you are like, uh, Let's still use the same MTN customer care as an example. So imagine you have a power virtual agent built for MTN and you're like, hello, and it answers you and says, hi, Rachel, how are you doing today? And you're like, I'm good. And it's say, okay, how can I help you today? And you're like, oh, I can't make calls. Then it can suggest to you, okay, these might be reasons why you are not able to make calls. So if that doesn't, it, now asks, it cannot go ahead to ask you, have I been able to solve your problem? Or have I been able to solve the issue you reported? Or would you need further assistance? So you can easily type, oh, maybe I need, it probably would give like options. And then you can click or select which option applies. So for instance, you say, oh, I need further assistance. And then it transfers you to an actual person that would chat with you. So basically what this chatbot does, so imagine that scenario now would reduce the amount of live people that you would need to support customers because the power virtual agent mm. bot is able to provide like supplementary support is able to provide like generic support so if it's just something generic that you probably 
we would have in maybe your Q and A session on your website. It's something the chatbot can handle. So at the same time, this chatbot can also be integrated with other systems to uh, maybe pull out data or to write in data into other systems. So we, you can use it with Dataverse. You can embed a power vet and um, power automate into it. So it also can um, it can also can interact with other systems. So it also can perform some follow up functions and actions while using the chatbot. So these are just some um, reasons why, so or some benefits of the chatbots. So now um, maybe I should try to show something. Uh, so now there's also something quite important. So when creating chatbots, you'd have to note that the environment is very, very important. So for instance, we can be we can choose to create chatbots maybe for a specific department in an organization. We can choose to create chatbot that is available maybe to everybody in the organization. So for instance, if I'm creating a chatbot that is for the finance department of my organization, there's probably an environment that is specific to the finance department. So instead of creating it on the default environment, I'll probably want to create it on that specific environment for that department. Yeah. So in this case here, if you, can you see, see my screen, please? Yes. Okay. So please, if you have questions at any point in time, you can just let me know. You can just unmute and speak, please. So, for instance, here I have just one showing, which is default. I have just one showing, which is default, but it's possible to have other environments. So assuming I had, assuming I had like five other departments or five other environments, they would all be listed here. So now I have just one here, but there could be multiple um, environments. So you, when creating a chatbot, it's also important to check what environment you are in. Then, so for instance, if I say new bot, so it asks for the bot name. So also you have a couple of different languages you can create your bot, bot in. It doesn't have to always be in English. So you can have the list of languages that are currently available are right here. So we have Danish, Dutch, English, French, German, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Norwegian, Portuguese, um, Russian, Spanish, Swedish, Turkish. So we also have some, um, some languages that are in preview, which are these other ones here. So you can actually just pick any. But well, <laughs> I would pick English because of course, yeah. um, let me just name it uh, intermediate. Sorry. Okay. Typo. Okay, so now it's asking is asking that we select an environment. So assuming I don't want to create it in this environment, I can choose to create an environment in which to create my bot. If I don't want to create it in that environment, it's possible to create a new environment for which I would like to create my bot. So now when you're creating an environment there are a couple of things that you should so after entering the name um, just a moment um, okay so you can see i'll just close this so yes yeah, asking me um, so i'll just try to create an environment so I just see new. 
So now you'd need to say a name. I'll just name it intermediate class. So now there are def several regions in which you can create your environment. So I'll just leave it at Europe. Mm -hmm. I'll just leave it as Europe. So now you can choose the type of um, environment you like to create. I'll leave it as sandbox. So um, purpose is to test a chatbot. I'll just put that there. So now you have an option to create a database for this environment or not. So depending on what you want to use the environment for, if you want to be interacting with database, then this is an option, then you would want to create a database for this environment. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at no. You can always create a database for it later. So I'll just leave it at no for now and say save. Okay. Okay, so you can see this error message here. It says that this environment cannot be created because um, the tenant needs, so basically it's just capacity issues. We need more space, database capacity, so I can't create a new environment. So in that case, I'll just, we'll just work with what we have. So in that case here, instead of saying create an environment, we'll use the existing one which we have, which is the default, I would say create, and then it starts creating the bots. Okay, so um, we're still loading. Okay, so we have our bots created. So it's named intermediate class. So I'll just try and go through each of these menus. Um, so we have, this is the home page or the landing page you meet when you create a new bot. Just close this. Okay. So now um, you have this is the home page. So this part here is where you can chat with the bot. So um, you can edit the test bot. You can um, publish the bot. You can do a couple of different things. So I'll go next to topics. So when you create a new bot, it has pre-existing topics. There are topics that come with the chat bots. Let's just wait for this to load. Basically, there are topics that come with the chat bot that just gives you more like an example of what a topic looks like. So you can easily edit. So you can easily edit either of all these top any of all these topics and change what is inside of them. So you can also switch between, you can either turn it off or turn it on. So you can see it now says off. So I can turn it back on by clicking on the toggle switch and it will be back on. So now I'll just look at a simple topic. When you click on it, it opens the topic in edit mode. So another part that is quite important while creating chatbots is that you always turn on the track between topics. So this way, when you turn this on, as you are chatting with your bot, you can see if it jumps to a different topic, it's going to show on your right-hand side here in this console where you can actually edit. So here, this is, this is an example of a simple topic. So we ha also have something called trigger phrases. So trigger phrases are basically phrases that trigger a particular topic. So the first thing we have in topics are called trigger phrases. So trigger phrases are like short phrases, multiple short phrases that could trigger. So for instance, um, 
I'm trying to ask about um, store hours. So I could ask, what time do you open daily? When are your stores closed? So these are just different. So those are like short, 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 short phrases. So each time the bot sees you type, each time you type any of this or any similar phrase to this, it automatically triggers the, this particular topic. And then, so for instance, let's demo it. So I can ask, um, So now I said, when is the store open? So obviously it did not pick, it did not pick this particular one. So I can just rephrase. So now it's giving me the options. Like where do I want to go? It's just giving me, so I can now click on this. You'd see that I triggered. Uh, so that happened very, very quickly it moved to a different topic. So if you want to see what just happened, I'll click on this again. Okay, so this is what happened. When I clicked on lesson one, it triggered this topic named a simple topic. So it, it asked, it said, because yeah, this is a message. It says, I'm happy to help with store hours, which is basically what we have here, which is what the customer on the front end would see. Then we also have a message, another message that gives me the information that I'm looking for. So it says the Redmond hours are, the Seattle hours are. So it gives me this information here. Then it asks me, oh, did that answer your question? So when it gave this, it came, to, it navigated to another topic, which is called end of conversation. So it is in that end of conversation topic topic that we have this question of did that answer your question so i can choose to say yes or no so for instance if i say if i say yes then it redirects me to this topic named confirmed success so you can see it it tells me to great please read your experiences so i can now choose or oh, maybe it's a five star i'll just click on five so that we will go to the next one, which says, thanks for your feedback. And then it says, can I help with anything else? And I'll say, no, thanks. And then that should end the chat. So that's the end of the chat. It says, thanks for chatting with me, bye. So you can always clear off this from here. You can always clear off the messages we have from here. Do you have any questions so far? Hope I'm not going too fast. Hello, are you there? Yeah, no question from my end. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. So I'll just continue. So now, um, just give me a moment, please. Okay, so I'll continue since there are no questions. So I'll continue from where we stopped, which is we're just talking about topics. So now we have um, system topics. Then we also have um, topics that you get to create. So I'll just show that very quickly. So as I mentioned, so you can see existing is 12. So there are some topics here that are, you see these topics from greeting down here that shows always on. These topics are always are also known as system topics.
you can see this one has uh, it has delete but this other one you can't delete there because it's the same topics this one this first um four are more like sample topics you can delete them if you want and create your own content for your own chatbots what you would want your own chatbot to do but these other ones here this um next this next one to the very end here are system topics so these topics are topics that are created by default with any chatbot you can't delete them you can however edit them so for instance now um for this greeting topic, I have 52 trigger phrases. So now you can just see it says trigger phrases teach the bots different types of So phrases we have, so the more phrases you have is more like some mini form of machine learning where I'm trying to teach this bot that anytime you see anything that resembles this, then it means the person is asking for this topic. So automatically bring up the content of this topic for the person. That's basically why we have trigger phrases. So um, this is greeting basically. So any way you want to greet. So if I enter anything similar to any of these trigger phrases that I have listed here, it's definitely going to trigger this topic. So yeah, you can as well add phrases. So you can, you can see it says add phrases, enter text. So I can just add. the moment oh, where was I greeting yes I was on greeting okay So for some reason, this is grayed out. Just a moment. So it's possible that we have more than enough. So we have a lot here. Let's go to another topic. So for instance, let me show with one of these. Um, other topics that are not system topics. So you can see for this one now, um, are you open weekends? Sorry. What are as are you? Or open. So this automatically adds the trigger phrase here. So you can also delete. So if I want to delete this, I'll just click on this and it gets deleted. So you can save. You can save a topic. So when you make changes to a topic, you save, you make sure you always save the topic and then you publish the bot to make sure that your changes are intact and will reflect when someone else is making use of your bot. So you can see it says your latest content has been published. This will become available to your users in about a minute. So that happens. So we also have the escalate topic. So escalate topic, these are the trigger phrases, quite a number of them. So we also have, I'll just go through a few of these, a couple of these system topics. We have end of conversation. So basically, this end of conversation, it's usually not necessarily triggered by triggered, trigger phrases. It has zero trigger phrases usually you have it in other topics so i can call a topic from another topic so that's basically how this is used most of the time that's why it seemingly does not it doesn't have any trigger phrases 
but it can still be navigated to when it is called from other topics. I'll show you how this works. So in this trigger phrase, you have asked a question, which asks, did that answer your question? Then, so did that answer your question? The answer usually is going to be yes or no. So you can, we're saving this response here. So we're saving this response in this variable called PRR survey question. And it's a Boolean value because the answer to this question is yes or no. That value is usually Boolean. So, um, so when you answer it based on your answer, so it's a, you added it, we added a condition here that says, so if it's yes, it's going to come to the true branch. If it's no, it will go to the false branch. So if it's yes, it gives you, you can see this is how we call another topic. It's calling a topic named confirmed success. So if it's false, if your answer is no, which, which is equal to false, it's going to call another topic named confirmed failure. Then this, of course, any other condition is left blank because actually in this case, it can actually just be yes or no. It most likely will never get to this point. So I'll go back and explain the next one. So you see the confirmed success topic and the confirmed failure. So this is where you have your star written. So you can see this also do not have trigger phrases because it is being called from another topic. So um, you just have your star written. Thanks for your feedback. Then you have a question. Can I help with anything else? So you can see this defines the option. So yeah, you can choose what kind of information. So now you are using multiple choice options, which which means you want to define the exact options that the users would have access to. So it could either be yes or it can be no. And so if it's yes, it says, go ahead, I'm listening. If it's no, it says goodbye. So basically, so now when you say, when it says, go ahead, I'm listening, most likely you'll be saying, oh, let me type. So by the time you type in something else, it now triggers a fresh topic that probably would um, resolve whatever issue that you're asking the bot or resolve whatever question it is that you're asking the bot. So basically, then um, next one is goodbye. So basically, this, so in case you tell the bot bye, so it tells you, it gives you this option, it tells you, thanks for chatting with me, bye. So basically, this, this one has trigger phrases, but it can also be called from other, from other topics. Um, what was the next one? We have start over. Start over has trigger phrases. So for instance, you are chatting with the bot and probably for some reason, you would just want to start afresh. So you can tell it start over, restart, let's begin again. And this would trigger this topic. And then it comes back to the greeting topic where it says hello to you and asks you what you would like. Then the next one, I'll just rush over this. The next one is thank you. So when you say thank you to the bot, it says you are welcome. So basically these are, system topics and these topics are always on but also you are able to so now you can see all these topics are showing that they've been edited by me it shows what time what when i last modified so you can see these ones i've not edited them it's showing modified by because uh, this is when the bot was created 17 minutes ago so basically so this other one is being edited so you can save when you as i mentioned earlier when you edit a topic you ensure that you save here it's grayed out because i've not made any change if i were to make a change so for instance i remove the question mark um it's it allows me to save so i can now save and republish the topic so are there any questions so far? 
before I continue. Okay, if there are no questions, I'll move on. So I would also go to the, I'll speak about the publish option. And I mentioned the publish before, so I can talk about, so there are also, so if we look at this part, we can also analyze our chatbot. So we have topics, so we have analytics. So now, because we just created this chatbot like a few minutes ago, so a good part of um, all of this is going to be blank. But assuming we have a bot that is constantly being used, um, maybe in an organization, then you'd have a lot of data here. So you can check different. Um, so now you can see different. So this is this page is the summary. So you can filter what dates to what dates that you want to um, check. You can see the total sessions. You can see the engagement rate, the rate at which this is being, um, the, the bot is being engaged. You can see the resolution rate. You can see the escalation rate. You can see the uh, abandon rate. So resolution rate is, okay, like how many issues or how many of, um, how many chats gets to confirm success that's basically resolution rate that's tell you the issue was resolved how many issues were resolved escalation rates basically when you're escalating to a life agent how many chats were escalated abandon rates basically the, the the customer just left the chat off middle of the way so how many chats were um abandoned then csat so you know we if you notice there was a star rating so this helps to check the CSAT. Now we definitely check the rating. So now we have engagement over time. We have session outcomes over time. We have resolution rate drivers. These are basically different measures to check the performance of your bots and how effective it is. So you can, this is um, topic triggering. Well, as I mentioned earlier, most of these are just going to be blank. So now um, it says this future checks for similarities in your trigger phrases that cause topics to overlap. So, you know, because of the way um, trigger phrases are, we use trigger phrases, of course, to trigger a topic. So, but we also need to be careful such that we are not using the same trigger phrases for different topics because if we are using the same trigger phrases for the same topic then it's very likely to overlap that when somebody enters something similar to that trigger phrase the bots might be somewhat let me use the word confused between which of these two topics it should trigger so that's basically what this is then um also you can um they are, the bot can also suggest topics. So this one can analyze your sessions and then it can easily suggest topics to users. So we also have customer satisfaction. Um, we have sessions, that's each chat, chat sessions. Then we have billing information as well. So um, I think I'll just... So there are different uh, metrics. Basically, as I mentioned earlier, our chatbot is basically going to be empty because we just created it. So it doesn't have, it has not been used over time. So it definitely will not have a lot of all of this. Um, it would have data for all of these metrics. Excuse me. Okay, um, so very quickly, um, there's another aspect I'd like to show. There are a couple of things that we can do on our topics as well. So I would show, I would duplicate one of the topics, then I would just try to play around that topic, that topic just to show you different functions or different things that we can do within that topic. Then we would also um, 
would also um, publish it to a demo site where we can see our bot in action. Okay, so let's continue. So I'll just go back to topics. And um, so um, you see this topic that says this lesson three topic. So if you click or hover on this, click on this, um, the ellipsis, we have options, go to analytics, make a copy, delete. So I'll just make a copy of this topic. Okay. So topic copied successfully. So now we can see the new topic. So you can see it has a copy at the end. So that's, um, that's a copy. So I'll click on it. So it opens up. I can easily edit. <laughs> oh no we meant to do that so just a new lesson come on i just call it new lesson so um here yeah, i really do not want to change this so i'll close this so there's also something I think I need to explain before we get to do this. Um, so by default, when you make a copy of a topic, it's going to be turned off by default. You can see that it says this topic has been turned off and you won't be able to test it, to turn it back on visit the topics page, which is the page we are just coming from. But nonetheless, so that I don't lose this change I made on the name, I'll just save it. And I'd like us to talk about entities within Power Virtual Agent. Then we'll come back and complete editing this topic and see it in action. So now um, this, this topic basically has, let's take a look at what it has. So it has a, this topic is for buying of items. So basically this bot, the default content of the bot is like having a store um having a bot created for a store so the topics there's one topic that handles like shopping hours or store hours the hours for which the store is open then this particular topic it's about purchasing items it solves the issue of purchasing items for customers for, oh yes from the store so now it has trigger faces like buy items buy online buy product, purchase item. So can you um, suggest more trigger phrases that we can add here? Are you there? Can we add other online? Of course. So I'll just say other online. Okay. So you just need to click on enter and then it adds it here. So um, I can say place an order. Sorry. Okay. Place an order. What about um, check out? Check out an order. Okay, so check out an order. So another thing to notice, this, um, these trigger phrases, they are not exactly case sensitive. So it could be all lowercase, all uppercase, it doesn't really matter. It just checks, basically checks the words. So you can also enter multiple trigger phrases mm. in here. So for instance, I'll be like, uh, let me just say buy multiple products. Buy. So instead of entering one one, the way I've been doing it, I want to show you how to multiple products. Sorry. 
So you can click on, you can press down your shift and enter, and it goes to the next line. And then you can put in another freeze, which will be um, purchase. Uh, let me say purchase items online. No, there's something similar already there. Okay, let me say goods. So I'll just click enter and then we have that. So I'll go again and save this bot. So now, for instance, um, if I want, so you know this topic is turned off. So I'm not going to, even if I enter this trigger phrase here, it's not going to trigger because the topic is turned off. When topics are turned off, they are not going to get triggered. So I'm not going to try to trigger this yet. I'll just try and go through the topic and explain what's going on here. So basically, if you enter any of these items or anything similar to these items, it triggers this topic and it, the bot says, I'm happy to help you place your order. Then it also goes ahead to say, uh, to what state would you be shipping? So now it picks... So, okay, I think this is the point where I should explain entities before we go ahead. So I'll just come, uh, okay, I saved already. So I'll just come here to entities. We'll come back to this topic, but before we do, I should explain entities. So now I'll click on entities. So it shows all the system or defaults, let me call it default entities that we have here. We have a couple of different entities listed here so basically um entities are like um i would say placeholders used to store different kinds of information or different kinds of data so now you can see that it says um name description method and modified by the main thing that I want us to look at as I scroll through is name and description. So basically, um, usage type, it says, let's say for, so this now is more like a custom entity. So now age, of course, what is age? It can be age of a person, it can be age of a place, it can be age of a thing. But we know what age. Age basically is like number of years. It's like a so it's pre-built. You can see the method. It shows that it's pre-built. So all these ones are like default entities. So Boolean, what is Boolean? Boolean kind of data. What is Boolean? Boolean is either true or false, yes or no kind of thing. So positive or negative response. So now, for instance, when you are working with the bot, the chat bot, and you are collecting some data from the customer that is interacting with the chatbot. So if you are collecting age, for instance, you would want to store it, you would want to make use of this age entity. If you are collecting Boolean, you would want to make use of Boolean. If you are dealing with city or you are dealing with a location, depending on what kind of location you are dealing with, you might want to use city, you might want to use country or region, you might want to use continent, depending, again, depending on the kind of data you're dealing with. So basically, that's what entities are. They are more like pre-built data types where you can easily store certain types of data. So we have a couple of them. We have city, we have color, we have continent, we have um, country or region, date and time. So these are different types of data that you can use while building your chatbot. So with that, I would go back to, um, but before we continue, I would like us to do like a quick quiz. So it's, um, I'm, it's, I'm just getting it from the Microsoft Learn platform. I think I need to reshare my screen. Okay. Sorry. 
just a moment. Okay. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, I, I can. We have, yes, we have just three questions here. So the first one says, which of the following power virtual agent component is used to define the conversation paths between a customer and the chatbot? What do you think the answer topics. is? Definitely topics. Because topics is what determines the pathway of or how the chat goes between the chatbot and the customer. So it's definitely topics. So the next one says which setting on the test chatbot, sorry, on the test bot panel lets you monitor a test conversation that spans across multiple topics. You know, I mentioned that you can jump between topics, but you need to turn on a particular toggle. So can you remember which one it was? So it's actually the track between topics. I'll show this after, after the quiz. Then uh, what must be done at least once before a bot can be deployed to different channels such as websites, Microsoft Teams, or Facebook? So I actually mentioned, but in passing. I think you would publish the bot. Yeah, exactly. You have to publish the bot first so that the users will have access to the updated information. So I'll just say check our answers. I believe we're all correct. Yes. So I'm not signed in. So we're all correct, as you can see. So we'll just go back to the course content. So I'll go back to that topic so we can um, continue with it. Um, okay. Okay, please give me a moment. Uh, a minute, please. I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, so um, yes, I was talking about entities, but let's go back to the topic we're editing, uh, which is this one right here, new lesson. Okay. I'll hide this. So now it says, to what state will you be shipping? It's a question. Okay. Um, so for instance, well, let me not do it there so it doesn't scatter what we already have. So now this is a question. So assuming we wanted to add, so we can add nodes. So these are the different types of notes we have. We have ask a question, 
call an action is power automate is when you want to call a power automate flow then um show a message basically you just want to display a message just the way this one is that says i'm happy to help you place your order you are basically just displaying a message then um i'll delete wait so i'll <laughs> I'll do this again. So redirect to another topic. So I mentioned earlier that you can call one topic from another topic. So assuming I want to redirect to another topic, I can pick, you would see all the topics listed here. So I can pick any of the topics that I want to redirect to. You can notice that this topic that we are in is not part of it because you can't redirect a topic to itself. So it definitely is not going to be part of this. So I can easily call another topic, but I don't want to do any of that. So I'll just leave it like that. I just wanted to show the different um, actions. So basically this is ask a question. So you type in your question, then you pick an entity that you want to make use of. So now, because you're asking to what state will you be shipping to, it's just wise that you use the entity that is named state. So that way it's easy to save data properly. Now, so this is state picked here. Then you also want to, you can edit the variable. So a variable is basically like a placeholder where the information that you are getting from the customer stays temporarily. So now, um, so you can, you can change the name of the variable. So the type is state the source. So I'll just close this. So, oh, sorry, there's something I forgot to mention. So down here, you can see that um, you can set how this variable is being used. So you can restrict this variable to a particular topic, or you can click on this that any topic in this bot can access the variable. So now we have topic, so it's limited to this topic. So now the next topic cannot see this variable. Only this topic will be able to interact with this variable. Okay. Let's close this. So now we have different values for different states. So, um, <coughs> Excuse me. So we have California, we have Washington, we have Oregon, and then we have any other condition. So which means if you pick any other state apart from these three states, or if you enter any other state apart from these three states, it just brings you down to this part where it says all other conditions, it redirects you to all other conditions, and then it tells you straight that there's going to be an additional charge of this for shipping. Then you ask you again, another question, is that acceptable? So most likely the answer to is that acceptable is either yes or no. That's why we're making use of Boolean here. And then it saves whatever response customer gives in this other, um, in this other variable. So from here, so, um so i think uh let me go let me explain other branches so now for instance um you have this branch that says um california so as you mean the customer picks california it goes down to this part that says um so now california Sorry. So now, when it's California, it doesn't need to tell the customer that there's an extra cost of shipping. This node, it skips this actually. It just under it. It doesn't go through this condition. So it just comes to ask what item I interested in purchasing and says we are focused on a few quality items. So now it gives you options. You pick the options and then it comes down here. 
So if you choose desktop computer, it has a different branch. If you pick laptop computer, it has another branch. If you keep, if you pick gaming computer, it has a separate branch. Then um, it basically displays different messages. Then it tells you, I'm adding this item. So this item here was saved. You can look at it here. This item was saved at this point. This is where this variable, this laptop computer was saved into this variable. So I would go back now and turn on this topic so we can see this topic in action. So you can see, uh, let me just go to topics quickly. So you can see it's turned off. So I'll basically turn it on. So we'll just do like two more things. We'll just play through this topic or test the topic and then we'll um, publish it to a demo site and also take a look at the bot before we end to this class. Sorry about that. So now this topic is turned on. I'll just go back. Hello, can you hear me? Rachel, your hand is raised. Do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. I I want okay. to ask what is um, conversation uh, conversation notes in Power Visual Agent. Okay. Yeah. I'll get to, okay, I'll get to that before we enter the class. Is that all right? Yes, it is. Thank you. All right. Sorry, I was muted. Um, okay, so let's continue. Okay, so now I'll just try to interact with this topic. So remember that we have a couple of um, trigger phrases for this topic. So I want to trigger this particular topic. So I'll say something like, I want to other Some items because I'm particular about triggering this topic. Okay, so it still asks me to clarify. So I'll just pick new lesson. So you can see immediately it goes to I'm happy to help you place your order, which is what we have here. And it asks me to what states will you be shipping? So for the course of this class, I would pick one of these states that is listed here. Then the next time I'm triggering the bot, I'm going to pick something that is not listed here. So it goes through all other conditions. So for this, I'll just say, so now it goes straight, you can see, so it comes, this is what I picked. So it comes all the way down. So if you notice this thing, it's not, it's passing underneath this condition. It's actually not stopping. You can see it's not green. Anytime it runs a card, you see it's green and then it ticks. 
So this, he didn't run this one. So it wasn't part of it. So he just came straight here and asked, what item are you interested in purchasing? So it gives me option of desktop computer, laptop computer, and gaming computer. So I'll just pick gaming computer. So you can see it comes to the, it comes to, uh, okay. So when I picked gaming computer, I say, go get them tiger. Sudoku helps keep the mind active. So I'll click on this. So it takes me, to, so if you want to navigate, so because we have this track between topics on, so if it moves to a next topic, it just automatically jumps to the next topic. So sometimes it might be a bit quick and confusing. So if you want to actually take it step by step to see, okay, what step ran to trace it, you can easily click on the items here. So if I click on this, it takes me to the exact point where he asked this question, which is this. So if I click on um, go get them, it takes me to the exact card where it stated this. So you can see that it came here, then it came here to say, I'm adding this to your cart. So now how does it know this value that is here? You can see that it's not stating, it's not a static value, it's a variable. It just used the variable that was declared above. So if you look at it here, this is, oh, sorry. This is where it knew what variable. So you can see that yeah, it says save response as. So whatever you click here, get saved in this variable, PVA underscore item, so that it comes back here. So that's the use of variable basically. So you can, you don't have to manually write in everything. So it uses the value you already create, you already provided earlier to say, I'm adding this to your cart. Then it says to complete your order, please go to your cart. Thank you. And then it redirects you to another topic, which is end of conversation. So now this end of conversation is what came back to say, did that answer your question? So if I click on did that answer your question, you will see that we are in a different topic, which is end of conversation. And we were redirected obviously from that other topic. And this topic, what we have here just says, did that answer your question? So basically it's going to be a yes or a no. So I can, it already gave me options of yes or no. So if I say yes, then automatically it takes me to the confirmed success. So I'll go back here so that it can show me again. So if you say yes, it definitely will go to confirmed success. If you say no, it will go to confirmed failure. Um, so now I want to go back to the other topic and trigger it all over again. So what I can do is I, I probably, I just want to clear all of this so you can click on this refresh here. So it refreshes, but I don't want to be, so I don't have to be on the topic that I want to trigger here on the right. I don't have to have it on the right hand side before it gets triggered. So I can say other items and it will still get triggered. So now it's asking me to clarify. I'll just click on this topic. Sorry. Okay. Let me say Lagos. So it didn't go back. Oh, okay. Sorry. 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 Uh, so for the starting topic, okay, I just want to try out something else. So I'll just open lesson one. Whereas I would say other items. Oh, I'm not sure I typed, sorry. Okay, so I'll click on this. Yeah, so it's, it works fine now. So 
it picked this topic. So you can see that I wasn't on new lesson, but it navigated to new lesson for me because that was the topic that got triggered. So now I'm going to pick a state that is not listed here. Lagos is not listed here. So I'll say Lagos. I want to deliver to Lagos. Okay. So it says, sorry, I didn't understand. So another thing you need to um, note is, oh, I probably should have opened this. Okay. Another thing you should, so I'll click on states. I'll click on states. So now you can see names and abbreviations. Uh, so not all, another thing you should understand is for this, um, for this bot, you remember that we, for this, sorry, uh, I just want to go back to states. So now this is making use of, I think, US. So it's listing states that are in the United States. So Lagos is definitely not in the United States. So you don't expect that it will pick Lagos as a state because it is not in the United States. So another thing I can do is I would, for this, for this lesson for today, I would use a different state that is also in the United States. So now it asks again to what state this sorry i didn't understand is because it's just a default response from the bot you won't see it anywhere here it will just re-ask the question again so this sorry i didn't understand is like a default response you won't necessarily see it on the tree yeah but it happens when the bot is not clear about the customer's response so for instance i'll try arizona i don't think it's there if I spelled it correctly. So you can see automatically it kicked it because it recognizes it as a state in the US. So it picked that up and he it tells me that there's an extra shipping charge and asks a question, is that acceptable? So I would say, uh, let me see. I would say yes. So for yes, it just comes back to the same place where I was before that tells me um, what item do you want to purchase? So now I almost feel like I should have said no. So well, the reason I didn't put no is if you put no, it's going to come here and tell you thank you and please come back again. And then it will go and end the conversation down here. It just tells you thank you and come back again because you've told it that it's not accepted. So there's no need asking you what you want to buy since you are not accepting the additional charge for shipping the item, whatever item it is you want to buy. So basically, I would just pick another, I'll pick laptop computer this time around. Then it tells me I'm adding laptop computer to your card. I want to see it in the chat. So I'll just do this. So you can see it here. Sorry. So this is it here. I'm adding laptop computer to your card. And then to complete your order, please, basically the same thing that we had before. And then it ends the conversation. So basically, this is um, just like a run through of how Power Virtual Agent works. So lastly, we'll would go to publish. So we have different options of publishing. So beyond publishing, um, so publish basically is so that the users will be able to see your latest content, but also we can publish our chatbots to a website. We can chat public, publish the chatbot to Facebook. We can share it in Teams. So basically, we can, there are different channels. Uh, okay, I'll go back. 
but these are the various channels on which we can publish our chatbots or we can embed our chatbots. So what we are going to do right now is for the sake of this class, I'll just publish to a demo website. Uh, so I'll just copy this link and say save. Then we want to see it. So, uh, okay, so I have to reshare my screen because it appears I'm sharing just one window. So you might not see the chat, but so give me a moment. I'll just stop sharing and share again. Okay, please um, confirm that you can see it now. Just can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so now I would, this is, so this is our chatbot interface here, right here. And we just want to, so this is just a demo site, of course. And we just want to check that this works well. So I'll use the same topic that we've been using since, which is related to ordering items. And I say other item and I select this. So it says I'm happy to help you place your order. So another point to note is when you are naming your topics, you probably want to give it descriptive names. So for instance, I probably would name this topic something like other an item, not new lesson, something, 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 not something this, this, this doesn't basically doesn't tell me what this topic does. So if a customer were to um, come across this situation, so I'll just refresh so it clears everything. Ah, so it didn't clear it. Uh, okay, so I have start over here. So I would say other item. So now you can see it says to clarify, did you mean, it's giving me this as an option. If I were a customer and I see new lesson, a topic with a condition, already I'm confused. And I see another one, lesson three, a topic with, I'm confused. I don't know what, what, what I don't understand what the bot is talking about. So when we are building chatbots, we should also learn to give descriptive names of our topic. So for instance, this one can be something like other, um, other item or something. So I'm just going to quickly go and change it. Uh, okay, where am I? Okay, so it might not, you might not see my screen, but I'll just quickly go and change it instead of on sharing and sharing again. But I'm just going to, I already showed us how to change the name of a topic. So I'll just quickly do it. I'll change it to other item. Then you cannot actually see your screen. Oh, you can see the other item part? Yes. Oh, great. Oh, it's on the same window. Okay, great. So I'm changing it to other item. So I will save. After saving, I would go back. Okay, still saving. I would go back and say publish and click on publish here and say publish latest content. So it says it will be available in a minute. But I'll just go back here and uh, hard reset, use F5 and see. Okay, so I'll close this, come back here. So I know this is published. So what I'll do is I'll um, try it on the demo website. 
and see if so other item So usually when you publish, it's best practice to wait for a couple of minutes before you expect the change to show on the front end. So that's quite normal. So you can see now this has changed to other item. So if I were going to other an item and I see other item, I'm like, oh, okay, yes, this looks like what I'm looking for. So I just click on it and then I start um, chatting with the bots. So it's best, so I would say no, just so that we can see what happens. So it just tells me, thank you and come, please. It's more like you go to a website or, yes, you go to a website and you're trying to purchase from a store and they have certain terms and conditions and you don't accept the terms and conditions. Of course, it's more like you have no business shopping yet. You don't accept our terms and conditions. So it's something similar. Like if you don't accept that there's going to be an additional charge, then uh, well, really, there's nothing more we can do for you. Just says thank you and come, please come, come again. And then he asks, did that answer your question? I can choose to say yes. If I say yes, it just ends it. If I say no, it will ask you, okay, what more? Okay, would you want to speak to an agent or would you want to rephrase so you can, this just resets the chat. This resets it. You can start again and say, oh, other item. Basically, that's how it goes. But also, another point to note is this is just a sample bot. You can draft out when creating a bot. You probably need to draw out the tree of events, how you want your conversations to flow, basically. So, um, Rachel, are you here? I think I'd like to answer your question before we call it a day. Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so, so you asked what a conversation node is, right? Yes. So basically a conversation node just um it sort of defines or it determines how a bot should respond to a trigger phrase and what it should do so for instance um i can send you an article for you to read so for instance you know that um, so i what i did is more like an overview so you know that also these bots can be oh, I'm trying to get the screen I have, okay. yeah right here if you notice when we started there was a prompt that came up i think i closed it just give me a moment uh, I think I closed it. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay, this is not exactly related to what I wanted to say, but also there's a natural language um, functionality that the bot has as well. But you might need to read um, about that because I may not be able to explain fully because we don't have so much time. Then also, the bot can also be used incorpor incorporated with um, Azure. Ah, what is it now? There's also a system. You know Azure has like a bot-like system. So you can actually sort of merge this, uh, the word on Azure to make it more to make it more effective depending on what you would like to achieve but basically to answer your question conversation nodes basically it just determines how like how how best or how your bot should respond when it's triggered by a trigger face and what it should do that's basically what it is is that clear 
Oh, would you need for that? Please, I can you still share the blog? The blog. Yes, yes, definitely. I'll share. I'll share an article with you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So I think this would come. Uh, this would be the end of our class for today. I believe next week we have question and answer, Victoria. Right? Yes, we have question and answer like for the entire track. Okay. That's the entire okay. 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 Three intermediate class. Thank you very okay. much, please. Thank All you very right. much for the detailed explanation.